Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I just want to do a quick video on this stair. I don't know that it's necessarily the correct way to build a porch stair, or necessarily the most efficient way, but it was fun and kind of clever. So let's take a look at it. First of all, we've got the posts. These posts are a complex beam, so it contains both the wood and the concrete below. Not always the best idea to have both those elements combined into one element, but it made sense for this project and I wanted to test it out. So we've got both the wood and the concrete there. Now I've got this, which is the cap or the railing post, and it's a, again, a complex column. We've got the cap and what I'm doing here is doing a trapezoidal segment. So the top is narrower than the bottom. Then I've got this next one. Uh, another thin piece, and then the, the main bottom segment. So if we zoom in real close, you can see you got the nice articulation of that top. What else do we have here? Here we have the actual the railing tool. I couldn't, for whatever reason, couldn't get the railing tool to give you the proper cap, so I just used the railing tool for the center. And this worked really great. Uh, I started to use the railing tool a lot more recently. So I've got a top rail, I've got rail, I've got some uh, balusters, and I've got another rail there. These balusters are pretty straightforward, just set them to have the right spacing. It's somewhere here, but I don't want to really get caught up in here, but the point is I've got this baluster set up to just be that, and I can run it continuously. The, the real feature of this stair is, is the stair itself, and if you know me well as an ArchiCAD user, you know probably know where this is going. This is one beam. So this whole thing right here is one very complicated, multi-segmented beam. So let's take a look at this. I have this, which is just the overhang. We're going to be looking up, up, the, up here a lot. So I've got this, which is just the thread overhanging it. Then next I have this, which is just the basically the paint layer or like brake metal on the end. Then next I have the actual stringer. Then a part that is just the, uh, the stair, but also with the horizontal beams for the landing. And then it goes back to the stringer and it starts repeating all these things. So it's a little overly complicated. It's got how many? One, two, three, four, five different complex profiles. Um, but those are actually fairly easy to make. Because if you make, um, say, you know, this one, if you want one without these beams, you just start deleting stuff, right? So you can kind of make one profile or one drawing with fills and then cut them out. But anyways, uh, there it is. It's a pretty cool, uh, very detailed, hyper accurate, beautiful stair. So let's take a quick look at this stair in 2D. Here we have the railing, here we have the post, which is done with the column tool. So the railing and the column is 2D and 3D. For the stair itself, I've actually used fills and hidden the 3D component of the stair. The reason I do this is it gives me better graphic control over the stair, so I can have it as diagrammatic as I want, as schematic as I want. I know the stair tool can handle this, but I find it's really fussy and it's just so much easier to be able to use a fill and say, I want the cut line here. I want this to be nice, clean, and simple. So the trick with this is to use a fill that is a series of parallel lines, set the origin to be user defined. So if I make a stair that's say three feet by 80 inches, I can select this. Let me just put it back to the default. I'll select this construction method. I can change the user origin direction, and then I just move it up to the end, and now I have a series of steps that are, you know, whatever, change that to vertical, you know, that the, the, are the right spacing. I really like this too for early design development and schematic design because you can just say, you know what, I need... And treads, I need 11 treads. I need you know, one fewer. Now let me move it back uh, you know, a, a certain amount to get it. 
And then this is just old drafting techniques where I'm moving it back 10 inches or 20 inches or 30 inches, whatever, to match the tread. So that's what the stair looks like in 2D. So that's all I got today. One cool front porch stair using some clever column work, some overly detailed beam work, and then uh, the railing tool for its actual purpose. But again, I'll just zoom in here real close. You can see, you know, that's all just, you know, really nice. So, okay, everyone, you have a great day. Thanks.